All right, this next poem is called My Grandpa's Ghost. And uh, it's the day after Halloween. And it's the day before Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. And uh, it's also the first day of Native American Heritage Month. And, uh, you know, all three of these things are worth giving some serious quality love and attention and participation to. And uh, my first poem isn't exactly what I thought was going to be my first poem for Native American Heritage Month, but uh, somehow it feels like uh, the poem I want to read or the poem that wants to be read. And uh, I feel like it it's about a lot of things and it's connected to a lot of things. It's about uh, grandpas. It's about spiritual experiences. It's about uh, our younger selves and the way our younger selves contain uh, the essence of our lifetime. Uh, like our whole life as it's going to unfold as we grow and get older and experience all sorts of stuff is kind of contained in its essence in our younger selves and it kind of uh, spills out it kind of finds a way to uh, let us know some uh, some of what we're carrying uh, you know, trying to key us into that life that's waiting for us, that we've got to maybe not be afraid to work for, not be afraid to sacrifice for, not be afraid to, uh, you know, do all sorts of things we never thought we'd do to get to, so that we can really be living a you know, the life we came here to live. This poem's about a lot of things, but uh, in a way, it's primarily about my grandpa, Zachariah Bond. My grandpa on my mom's side, her dad, and he was a World War II uh, veteran. He was a history teacher. He retired as a high school history teacher from... Uh, uh, the high school in Laurel, Nebraska, and uh, he was just, uh, he was a Golden Gloves boxer, he was, uh, he was, he was awesome, and uh, he was a great storyteller, I feel like uh, when I was just a little guy, I would experience him telling all these just larger-than-life, unforgettable stories from uh, his youth and from his life. And everybody in uh, the living room would just be completely uh, lit up uh, by the experience of getting to hear him tell another great story so well and so beautifully and in a way that was just like so full of the soul of life and uh that's what he, that's part of what he carried in his uh kind of giant body <laughs> he was a big guy he's a big dude and uh i feel very lucky to have had him in my life for 23 years he passed on when i was 23 i think 23 maybe 22, 22 or 23. And, uh, you know, he was always just incredibly loving, incredibly encouraging. And uh, I want to say like, just like proud in a completely pure way of, uh, you know, me being Indian. And, uh, you know, I grew up in the 80s, 
and uh, it sure wasn't considered a cool thing to be Indian in the 80s. <laughs> and uh, I experienced all sorts of stuff and, uh, you know, lots, lots of uncool stuff, we'll say. But uh, whenever I was with my grandpa, you know, he would uh, always buy me Indian books and inscribe them with uh, really encouraging messages. And I have all those books still. And all I have to do is open them up and read that inner flap. And his inscription still just radiates all of this, uh, you know, true grandfatherly love for me. And honestly, I think my grandpa with his gift could see uh, the essence of me and uh, who I was. And the way that he treated me, you know, I, I just feel like his wisdom was guiding him to just kind of pour a tremendous amount of love on all the seeds inside of my uh, personality and identity and essence so that all the right parts of me would be well fed, all the right parts of me would be uh, well encouraged, and all the right parts of me would just grow. So I could become, you know, the kind of creative person that I wound up being my whole life. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be who I am without my grandpa Zach. And man, are we lucky when we have someone in our lives, especially someone in our families, that we can say that about. That... Uh, you know, they just played such a crucial role in our youth or our upbringing that uh, we became who we always wanted to be because of, you know, the way that they uh, impacted us. My grandpa is a guy like that. And I've dreamed of him many, many, many times uh, since he's passed. And uh, he's in a lot of my unpublished writings. And, uh, you know, I should say this. My grandpa had a gift that was with him since he was a little boy. And uh, this was the kind of gift that American culture was not at all interested in in making a little boy feel good about and so he hid it his entire life and he rarely talked about it but uh, our family has uh, many stories about uh, the experiences he had and the things he shared when he did open up and share that were uh, due to that gift and I have to intuitively imagine that it was that same gift that guided him to be so loving and encouraging to uh, all the parts of my creative self that needed uh, bolstering and nurturing and needed to be seen by the eyes of a loving grandfather like him. So that I could just have those parts of myself wrapped in these memories that star my grandfather and that star his love, you know. So this poem is about him. And uh, I guess it's the way I'm deciding to start off Native American Heritage Month. You know, Native American Heritage Month is a time where we learn that not only are Indians real, are Native people real, but we're three-dimensional, we're complex, we have, you know, 
as much of a as much humanity and as much of a you know intricately carved soul landscape as anyone you can imagine as anyone from your favorite movie as anyone you've worked with you've gotten in a fight with you've made love to you've tried to avoid you've dave dreamed about you know we we indians were real and we're layered and we you know we have so many nooks and crannies and contours and unseen parts to us and uh you know this poem is kind of you know just a uh, a communication from the realness of this one particular Ponca Indian sitting in his car in Astoria, Oregon. And hopefully that uh, communication of realness uh, extends to and expands uh, your understanding of any Native people you've known and just lacquers them with even more palpable realness too you know expanding and deepening your understanding of the native people you know or have known or of the native person you are yourself you know so i guess that's kind of how i'm tying this all together and uh this poem is called my grandpa's ghost i was 22 23, stocking shelves in the cereal aisle at about two in the morning, when suddenly I smelled smoke. The smell was so strong that I stopped and looked around. I pulled in a deep whiff. Do you smell that? I asked my two co-workers. It's smoke, like something's on fire. You can't smell that? <laughs> Neither of them could smell anything. They kept working. I closed my eyes and inhaled deep. Instantly, I saw a vivid, crystal clear image in my mind. It was of my grandpa Zach's book-filled study, his desk, his chair. The smell was the distinct smell of him smoking his pipe that he always smoked. That's what the smell was. Seeing this image, I made a quick prayer for him. And then I went back to stocking the cereal. That morning when I got home, the light on my answering machine was blinking. Hi Cliff, this is mom. I have some bad news. I just wanted to call and tell you that last night your grandpa Zach passed away. Ever since that night, I've always figured that that was him paying me one last goodbye visit while he was on his way out of here. His spirit was with me then, in that moment, in the cereal aisle, as it is with me now, in my heart, as I write this and think about him and remember him. And I can still smell that smoke. I can still smell that sweet smoke coming from his pipe as the two of us sit together in his study, surrounded by books, happy and occupied with our thoughts in the silence. Uh, that's a real experience I had, and that poem is dedicated to my grandpa, Zachariah Bond. Uh, man, I really believe he is still, he's still with me. And, uh, 
I'm happy that that's uh, the case. 